Okay, so if we start with the horizontal stretch instead of the vertical, we're going to double all the x values. So to stretch horizontally by a factor of 2, double all the x values. So instead of this point here at negative 4, 2, I'm gonna, it's going to be at negative 8, 2. And this point at 0, 2, if I double the x value, it's still going to be 0, 2, because doubling 0 is still 0. And then here, this point at 4, negative 2, double the x value becomes 8, negative 2. So there's my horizontal stretch. Okay. And then I do a vertical stretch times 2, which doubles all the y values. So I get negative 8, 4, 0, 4, and 8, negative 4. And these two graphs look exactly the same. So I guess the order didn't matter here either. So the question is, does the order ever matter? So let's do this one. What two transformations have to take place to graph 2 times f of x plus 2? What is the time? What is the 2 in front? What transformation is that indicating? Stretch vertically by a factor of 2. Vertical stretch times 2. And this plus 2 on the end, what's that telling us to do? Shift up 2 units. Okay, so I want, I want you to work in your groups. Do both orders. First, start with the vertical stretch. Then do the shift up to. Then start over. And instead of doing the stretch first, do the shift first. Followed by the vertical stretch. And see if the two graphs come out the same. OK, so let's go through it together. First, we'll do a vertical stretch times 2. To stretch vertically by a factor of 2, you should multiply all the y values by 2. So instead of this point, negative 4, 2, it's going to be negative 4, 4. And then instead of 0, 2, we get 0, 4. And instead of 4, negative 2, we're going to get 4, negative 4. So that is our vertical stretch. Okay. Then we take that result and move it all up 2. So again, I can just move these three important points because they're connected by lines. So if I know what happens to those points, I just connect them and I'm done. So this point is at negative 6, 4. Move it up to, it's going to be at negative 6, 6. And this point at 0, 4 is going to be at 0, 6. And then this end point at 4, negative 4, when I move it up to, is going to be at 4, negative 2. So that's my end graph. I did a stretch followed by a shift to get that one. No, because you move it up to. No, I mean why not? Oh, I, I wasn't supposed to stretch horizontally. Yeah, but it started out as negative 4. Oh, sorry, I see. Sorry, yeah, that should just be at negative 4. 4, thank you. Okay, better? Okay, <laughs> thanks. Okay, so now I'm going to do the opposite order. First I'll shift everything up to, and then stretch. So if I take this graph here, my original f, and shift it up to, I'm going to get negative 4, 4, 0, 4, and 4, 0. 
Then I take that and vertically stretch it by doubling all the y values. So I'm going to get negative 4, 8, 0, 8. And this point here at 4, 0 is still going to be at 4, 0, because when you double the y coordinate of 0, it's still 0. So this is our result. Is that the same? No. We have two different graphs now. So we got two different results. Which one should really come first? So we have to figure out which, only one of them can be correct. So we have to figure out which one is right. So we're going to do go back to the old table method, right? We're going to make a table, plug in the x that they give us, and evaluate what y should be. So let's look at our two graphs. Pick an x value, any x value, where these two graphs have a different y. Give me one x value where these two graphs, this one and this one, have a different y value. 4, yep. So this one, at 4, y is negative 2. And in this graph, when x is 4, y is 0. So I'm just going to test the one point, 4, and see which one of my graphs is correct. So I'm going to go to this table, and I'm going to plug in a 4. So this says, replace the x in the formula with a 4. So this is going to be 2 times f of 4 plus 2. Now what is f of 4? Using the original graph of f, I want to know what f of 4 is. Negative 2. So I look at my original graph of f, this guy, I find x equals 4, and I get the y value is negative 2. Okay, so I'm going to replace the f of 4 with a negative 2. So this says 2 times negative 2 plus 2. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, plus 2 is negative 2. So 4, negative 2 is a point on my graph, should be a point on my graph, which means that which of these two graphs is correct? The first one. This one is correct because 4, negative 2. Yeah, so you're correlating this to the order of operations. Yeah, we did the multiplication first here. So this one is right because 4, negative 2 should be on the graph. So that's, um, that's a good conjecture. So we're saying multiplication first. Because of the order of operations. That would be normal, yes. Mm -hmm. And we also did the stretch before the shift. Multiplication before addition corresponded to doing the stretch before the shift. So these are our guesses of, of how the rule is working. Let's look at one more. What two transformations are happening here? I have f of 1 half times x minus 2. So, yep, uh, no, it's not shifting down. Yep, so this is a shift right. And what's this 1 half telling me to do? Horizontal stretch by 2. Okay, so I want you guys to investigate. Do it both ways. Do the stretch, then the shift, and the shift, then the stretch. See if the results are the same, and if they're not, figure out which one is, is correct. Okay, let's go over it together. 
So a horizontal stretch times 2, that means double all the x values. So I'm just going to look at my three important points, double all the x values. So instead of negative 4, 2, I get negative 8, 2. Instead of 0, 2, uh, I stay at 0, 2, because doubling 0 is still 0. And here I have 4, negative 2, it's going to become 8, negative 2. So there's my horizontal stretch times 2. And then I shift everything right to. So again, look at just the three points and move them each to the right two units. So this is going to be negative 6, 2, 2, 2, and 10, 2. I mean, 10, negative 2. Okay, so then we do, we start over, and I'm going to do the same two transformations, but the opposite order. So I'm going to start by going right two, look at my three points, move them all to the right two. So I'm going to have negative two, 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 and six, negative two. So there's our shift right two. And then if I horizontal stretch times two, now I double all the x values. So this is going to become negative 4, 2, 4, 2, and 12, negative 2. Just look right here. Okay, are they different? Yes. Okay, so let's pick one point, one x value, where these two graphs have a different y value. And we'll figure out which graph is correct. Negative 6, sure. This one, this top one, has the point negative 6, 2. And this graph has no, it's undefined at negative 6. So they're different at negative 6. So I'm just going to check the x value of negative 6 and see which one is correct. What do you conjecture is the correct one? What would you guess is the correct one? Dan, what do you think? Dustin, sorry. <laughs> How come? Yep. Okay. Okay, so if we're if this does in fact correlate to the order of operations, you would do this minus two first, which corresponds to the shift, because it's in parentheses. Okay. Any other any other guesses? Which one's right? Teddy, what do you think? Okay. If you distribute that half, yeah, you could do that. You could multiply first by doing a distribu distribution, yeah. Let's see what happens if I actually check the negative 6. So in this formula, I'm going to replace the x with a negative 6 and see what I get. If I get undefined, then I know the second graph is right, and if I get 2, I know the first graph is right. So this is going to be f of 1 half times 6 minus 2. Okay. So now I really am following the order of operations. So I'm not stretching and shifting. I'm just doing some arithmetic. So now I know that I really follow the order of operations. So 6 minus 2 is 4, and half of that is 2. So I get f of 2. If I go to my original graph to evaluate f of 2, what do I get? Zero. That is not an option for either of them. What happened? Oh, I used six and not negative six. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> F of one half times negative six minus two. Okay, so negative six minus two is negative eight, and half of that is negative four. 
what is f of negative 4? Go to my graph, negative 4, y value is 2. So I got 2, which means the first graph is the one that's right. That's the correct one. So the conjecture of order of operations doesn't quite hold. So we kind of have our own rules. But in this example, we also did the stretch before the shift, which we did in the last one, too. Right? It was stretch before shift. So we did stretch before shift again. Maybe that's the pattern. And it is. Okay, that is the general rule. You do the stretch before the shift in general when you're doing multiple transformations. When in doubt, do stretches or sh shrinks before shifts. Okay, so in other words, you're going to change the shape of the graph before you shift it around. There are cases where the order doesn't matter. And Dustin, you, you very uh, articulately explained when it doesn't matter. What is it? Uh-huh. Right. Right. So if your transformation, if one transformation is applying to X and one transformation is applying to Y, one's horizontal and one's vertical, order doesn't matter. But if you have two transformations where one where they both apply to Y or both apply to X, both vertical, both horizontal, then the order matters. So there are cases where order doesn't matter. But sticking to this principle of doing a stretch before any shifting um, will never lead you astray. Assuming that we've written the input of the function with the coefficient of x factored out like we did, we wrote f of 1 half times x minus 2 rather than f of 1 half x minus 1. So this is what you were talking about, Teddy. You said, well, you could distribute that 1 half. And if you distribute the one half, the when in doubt rule no longer holds. Okay. Then in this case, you would do the shift would come before the stretch, which is weird. So we're going to stick with always do stretches before the shift and factor out the coefficient on x. Okay. If it isn't already done for you, you'd have to factor it out. So two takeaway points. Stretches before shifts. Factor out the coefficient on x. So now I have this new principle. The only thing I have to remember is stretches before shifts. If there are more than one stretch, you can do them in either order. If there's more than one shift, you can do them in either order. So I want you to work in your groups to see if you can come up with a graph for this function that has four transformations. OK, so there's more than one order that can work here. The only rule that you should live by is you should never do a shift before a stretch. Right? So if you have multiple transformations, do all your stretching or shrinking first before you do your shifting. So I'm going to do. I can just work from left to right here. That 2 out front corresponds to a vertical stretch. So as long as I do my two stretches first, or shrinks, right, I can, I can choose whichever order I want. I could do vertical, horizontal, or horizontal, vertical. OK, so <clears throat> vertical stretch. I'm going to double all my y values. So I get negative 4, 4, 0, 4, 4, negative 4. And then a horizontal stretch is going to double all the x values because it's a 1 half. That's how I know to double. Okay, so instead of negative 4, 4, it's going to be negative 8, 4. 
zero four stays zero four because when you double zero it's still zero and then instead of four negative four I have eight negative four okay so both my stretches are done I could have done horizontal and then vertical and I would have come out with this at the same place okay so no matter what order you did here this is what your second graph is going to look like then from there from here I'm going to do my shifting, and I can do my shifting in either order. I can go right to, up to, or up to, right to. It won't matter. So let's do, um, we'll do the right one first. So if I shift that whole thing right, I'm just going to look at each of my important points. Negative 8, 4 would go to negative 6, 4. And 0, 4 would go to 2, 4. And the last point on the end, 8, negative 4, goes to 10, negative 4. And then we take that whole graph and shift it up to. So instead of negative 6, 4, we get negative 6, 6. 2, 6, and 10, negative 2. Okay, so your final graph should look something like that. Whether you shifted up first and then right, or right first and then up, your final graph will come out here, like that. So to check, we could pick a point or two just to double check. So let's see. Um, if I plug in 10 for x, my y value should be negative 2. So let's go to my table, and I'm going to replace the x in the formula with a 10. So I have 2 times f of 1 half times 10 minus 2 plus 2. And now follow the order of operations, because now we're doing arithmetic. So we do what's inside the parentheses first. 10 minus 2 is 8. Half of that is 4. So all of what's in here simplifies to a 4. So I have 2 times f of 4 plus 2. Okay, what is f of 4? You go up to the original graph of f. Yep, f of 4 is negative 2. So I replace f of 4 with a negative 2. So this is 2 times negative 2 plus 2. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, plus 2 is negative 2. And that agrees with the fact that the point 10, negative 2 is on my graph. And you can check more points. If you forgot how to do the transformations, if you forgot what the, how to make the order work, or how to do any of the transformations, you could have started with the table and plotted a bunch of points to see what happens. Okay, so there's no, um, the memorization or having a cheat sheet with all the rules on it is awesome and it helps you do these things faster. <clears throat> but there's, the memorization isn't high stakes, right? You can always make a table of values and figure out what the graph is going to look like. Okay, here's a new function. Okay. Uh, it's a new parent function. So I had you graph a bunch of parent functions in project three. This one is called the sine of x. Um, you won't be formally introduced to it until pre-calc uh, 108 but this is called the sine of x, and it's just a, a wave. So it's used um, to model a lot of things that come in waves, like sound, uh, light, things like that. So I want you to sketch a graph of a transformation of the sine wave. Okay. So don't forget to factor out the coefficient on x and use this one graph to draw all your steps. Okay, so it might be helpful if you had more than one color, that would be helpful. 
but I'm sure everybody doesn't. You can do like a dashed line and a dotted line and things to keep it straight. So write down what all the transformations are and then work on uh, graphing it.